Welcome to our Google AdWords 102 tutorial. In part two, we'll run a content network campaign. In this video, I'll show you the details of a strong recommendation I do have for you. I'll start with an example, which should make this recommendation very clear. We'll start by taking a look at our Antique Tables campaign. If I select it, and click Edit Settings for this campaign. You'll note that at the moment it's being displayed in the Google search network and the search network, which is made up of Google's partner sites, but not the content network. If you hold the mouse over this symbol, you'll see a quick description of the content network the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of sites, which aren't official Google partners, but are the sites where Google has given permission for the site to display Google Ads. And every time a visitor to one of those sites clicks a Google Ad, the owner of the site gets a percentage of the fee, and Google gets the rest. Making use of the content network can give you a huge reach. Although, as I recommended in an earlier video, when you start a campaign, you probably should start conservatively with just the Google Search Network, then later on expanding to the Google Partners in the Search Network, and lastly, if everything is going well and you're confident about how the campaign is going and it's making money, you may wish to consider expanding to the Content Network. Also to remind you, I don't recommend running the Search Network and the Content Network in a single campaign. It's recommended that you have those two in two similar but different campaigns. Let me show you how this is done. I'm going to leave the Antique Tables campaign in the Google Search and Search Partners Network. To demonstrate this, let's cancel. And I'm going to set up a new keyword targeted campaign. And very easily select Campaign to copy. I'm going to copy Antique Tables and go. It makes things a lot quicker. We'll change the campaign name slightly. Just above that, you see that it's copied over the target language and the target locations, but let's change the name to Antique Tables Content. Network. Add group name, secondhand tables, that will do in this instance. And it's copied the ad. I'll leave it as it is for now. Now choose keywords, let's say antique tables as a broad match and also antique tables as a phrase match and exact matching antique tables. Let's also say secondhand tables. Okay, that's done, and I've added antique tables and secondhand tables in all the matching types. We'll keep the daily budget at a dollar a day and the default bid at six cents. That's fine. Networks. Now this is important. Let's turn off Google Search, and of course the system tells me I must select at least one network or my ads won't appear anywhere. So let's turn on the Content Network and Content Bids, and this shows you that you can set different costs per click for bids that come from the Content Network. Generally, you would only select that if you were also advertising on Google Search or potentially on the partner's search network. Since we're not advertising on those networks, we don't need to select this to select separate content bids since the content network is the only place we're advertising. And save campaign. It's checking the details, and it's all done. What I often do as soon as the campaign is set up is to edit campaign settings just to make sure everything is the way it should be. 
Antique Tables Content Network is the name. Starting today and running until the end of 2010. Budget, a dollar a day. Delivery method standard. Keyword bidding. Default bidding. Maximum cost per click. Ad scheduling is off. Position preference. No thank you. Ad serving. We want to rotate evenly, which is what I generally suggest. Okay, the campaign is not showing on the Google Search and Partners Search Network, but is on the Content Network, which is fine. And we're using English and showing to the UK and the US. That's all fine. So just one small change here to the ad serving method of our choice, and save changes, and it's done. So there's our ad group, Secondhand Tables. It's active. Default maximum cost per click is six cents. And no data yet, of course, because it's just been set up, so we have no clicks and no impressions. Click through to the ad group. And now you can see that Google Search has been disabled. Even though there's a maximum cost per click, it doesn't affect Google Search because it's not running there for this campaign. The content network is enabled with a maximum cost per click of six cents. From the tabs here, we can click on keywords, and there are our keywords. This little magnifying glass symbol is helpful because if you hold the mouse over it, it tells you more about the keyword, if it's active, if there are any issues with it, etc. However, it only works when the keyword is running on the Google Search Network. So you see here it says that this campaign is set to show ads only on the content network. To test this keyword, your campaign must be opted in to the search network. This is a useful tool for those campaigns and certainly something to keep in mind because sometimes there are issues with keywords and this is a very quick diagnostic tool. Last tab, Ad Variations. We have just one ad, so we aren't rotating them or anything. Secondhand tables was just copied through from the other campaign, so it's fine for now. Again, it's going through to an existing site that I'm just using as an example because it's quite relevant. And that's my suggestion for setting up a separate campaign for running ads on the content network. It becomes a lot clearer when you begin to get a lot of decent data. When you get a lot of clicks and impressions, and it makes it easy to get an idea about what's working and what isn't working. It's a way to get a quick idea for what's making you money or what's wasting you money, and it's much easier to do if you break your campaigns up in this way.